Hey friends, I welcome you all to yet another exciting series of learning Linux tutorial. So today we are going to master top command with 50 amazing example. Okay, so let's go on. So what is top? Actually top is an utility provided by the Linux which gives you complete analysis of all the running process on the system, all the currently active process in the on the, in the system to be precise and also it tells about the system performance like CPU memory utilization and and lot many stuffs okay so top it displays the complete active process CPU memory and lot many other information these are some of the shortcuts that top commands provide if you want to list processes in the order of uh, memory utilization you say shift plus M if you want to list processes in order to CPU utilization, use a shift plus P. And if you want to sort top processes which are, I mean, occurring, uh, which you can see through top through any customized way, use a shift plus O and you are presented with all the options and you just select that and processes are sorted according to that. And if you want to save the configuration file of this uh, top current, current configuration file, use a shift plus W and it will be safe to this part so let's go to our practical session and simple say top and you say here it tells about the time user load average task cpu related details memory then swap and all the processes okay okay the first thing will short the processes according to the CPU utilization we say shift P okay we say shift P and you see a how many processes sort according to the CPU utilization that is it's taking 0.6% okay if we want to uh, short the processes according to the memory utilization we say shift M and you say processes are sort according to the memory utilization similarly if we want to short processes according to anything which is here like PID, user, PRI, um, nice value, virtual, I mean anything. You say shift O and you are presented with all the options, right? And suppose I want to short the processes according to say uh, nice value, okay? So I will say I and uh, I will say enter and you say process are sorted according to the nice value. Okay, similarly you can select anything and it will be sorted accordingly. Okay, and if you say shift W, so it wrote configuration file to this part. Okay, so let's continue our tutorial. Okay, so now we are trying to understand top command in great detail. We want to understand each and every thing what actually it means. Then only we can analyze our system performance or I, I can analyze any process. Okay. So the first row shows these things. The current time, the system uptime, the current user, the CPU average load in 1, 5 and 15 minutes interval. It also in this the second row shows about the total processes information. And the third row shows about the CPU information. The fourth row talks about the memory, and similarly, the fifth row talks about the processes. Okay, so we'll go into detail practical session, and there will be, we will be able to understand it in a much clearer fashion. Okay, so this is the top. No, sorry, this is the top. This is the current time. This is the uptime. I mean, uh, two hours 55 minutes has gone past. From which system has been started. Two users are currently logged in, and this is the load average. What is load average? Load average actually says what was the average load on the system. In a simpler, I, I mean, if I want to give you an example of it, if load average is below one, no need to worry about it. It means all the processes in the system is getting CPU as soon as they want it. If it is more than one then yeah I mean processes have to wait for getting CPU so there is some delay in process execution but if it's more than three then you need to enhance your uh, CPU in the system okay 
so actually load average is is a very complex topic if you go deep down so i will see if i can i can have a separate video tutorial dedicated to this field because it's very important to understand it in a loaded environment it gives you very good analysis okay, okay? now the second row is the tasks row the second row is the task row and it shows the number of tasks so 101 is the total number of tasks two tasks are currently running now it has become one 97 tasks are sleeping three are stopped and we don't have any zombie i believe we know what is a zombie a zombie is a process whose present uh, whose parents are not existing anymore so actually you don't have any control on the zombies so what zombies do zombies just utilize your resources and waste it. so if you have any zombie just kill it cpu now it tells about the cpu utilization in different categories the first thing is the percentage of cpu used by the user processes i mean the processes that are run by us so it will indicate the percentage of cpu it, uh, used by the user processes then percentage of cpu used by system processes these are the actual linux system processes the kernel processes that is actually using the system okay then percentage of cpu used by the nice value you know when you when you i mean increase the priority of a, of any process to decrease the nice value right the default nice value is zero so uh, then it will take some pro, uh, cpu cycles right so that that is the percentage of cpu used by the nice so you can see it here this is the idle i mean currently almost 100 percent is idle and this is the cpu waiting for io so for reading from a file or reading from a device this is the io when uh, when this value becomes large then it is a worry factor right similarly this is the percentage of cpu used by the hardware in products similarly percentage of cpu used by the software in products right hardware and software interrupts are also an interesting topic it's uh, it's also a deeper concept uh, it's currently out the, out of the scope of this video tutorial so probably i will also cover it in, uh, in the coming video tutorial where i will separately talk about what are hardware interrupts what are software interrupts how they actually impact your system performance and everything and this is a very interesting field which is generally immaterial to a desktop environment but when when you have a virtual system on your server then it matters a lot actually uh, it is called steal time steal time is the delay is the delay uh, in fact it's a time to get a actual cpu or the virtual cpu so generally in virtual system what you have you have multiple cpus and all the CPUs are actually taking some, some time slice from the actual CPU. So the delay in getting the actual CPU by a virtual CPU is the, your steal time. Okay, so it's relevant for the virtualization system. Um, okay, so now we go to memory field. This is a total RAM. This is total physical memory that we have in the system. This is the memory use to be honest this is not the actual utilize but for the time being we will consider the total memory use this is the total physical memory free this is not also the true value i will i will tell you but let us consider this is the free and these are the buffers what are buffers actually buffers generally you know linux has a very good way of optimizing your system resources and also optimizing your perform the performance of your uh, apps, uh, processes that are there. when it sees that the system has a lot of physical memory it takes the memory out of the uh, into buffers right and it allocates those buffers to the processes that require memory right so in this way it optimizes the use of um, uh, memory and also helps processes to I mean uh, to maximize the performance right so buffers are actually it's just a collection of memory that is kept by linux for optimizing the performance so whenever it is needed by the any process it is given back to the system 
so if you talk about the actual physical memory available this is the sum of it okay so sometimes you may see this value going very down so you need not to worry about it it may be into buffers right so you just sum this up and you will understand how much memory you have okay this is the swap so this is the total swap we are not using any swap because we don't have any intensive process which is memory hawking and this is the free and similarly i mean uh, linux has a cache it keeps some of the memory from this swap into the cache for optimization purpose right so if you talk about the total free memory then you have this memory that is free memory plus buffer plus plus cache okay that is the total memory that is free okay uh, similarly if you want to know what is the used memory so you just this memory minus buffers give you the actual memory. okay uh, now this is the uh, this is the sixth field sixth row okay which talk about process specific parameters okay so this is the PID PID is a process ID every process has a unique ID when it comes into existence and um, so this unique ID is known as process ID these are the users through which this processes are running so currently you can see most of the processes are running from the root user priority the process priority I mean the value shows the process priority uh, 0 being the highest priority and it can go up to 40 nice nice is a is a utility through which you can increase or decrease the process priority it's it ranges from minus 19 to 20 right and minus 19 this uh, uh, being the most uh, being the highest priority process and 9 and 20 being the lowest priority process so nice actually is is the probability of getting your cpu uh, i mean scheduling right so it's a it's actually a scheduler priority that you get for getting so the lower nice value you have the highest priority of getting you to the cpu by cpu cycles okay so you can you can i mean decrease in nice value and you will also see that the price of priority actually increases okay and uh, this is the virtual memory the total virtual memory that is used by the process this is the resident memory. Residence memory means the total memory that is non-swap, currently non-swap memory, uh, non-swap physical memory. That currently this process is using from the RAM, the physical memory, right? So it's non-swap, and this is the your, um, uh, this is the non-swap physical memory. Shared memory. Shared memory means the memory that this process is using is being shared by other processes also. okay so it this memory is being shared among processes right s state so s means state the current this process state is sleeping this process is running similarly you have uh, state d is uninterrupted sleep right so this is so s indicates for the process state and um, percentage CPU means the percentage of CPU being taken by that particular process. Percentage memory, the percentage memory taken by the process, currently used by the process, right? The time, the time from which the process is running, and the command, it means the command name, the complete command name, and the process name. Okay. So this is the entire top explanation. I hope now you are more. I mean, you can understand top in a much better fashion. Okay. So if you have any queries, you can share your comments on the YouTube uh, channel. So let's go back to the PPT and let's see. We have already covered this. This. Okay. Now. Some of the things that we can do with top, you can press C to see the complete path, absolute path of the currently running process. Similarly, you can kill any process by pressing K and passing process ID. And you, you see that 
the top is very black and white. So if you want to make it a little colorful, press Z. Similarly, if you want to increase or decrease priority of your process, then you can re-nice it. How to do it? Press R. And uh, if you if you have multiple cores in the CP in the uh, machine and you want to see the CPU utilization of each core, press one. It will bifurcate uh, your uh, top in the top CPU line into multiple number of CPU that you have. Okay. And by default, the refresh rate is three seconds. And if you want the top to refresh um, maybe sooner or you want to make it 2 seconds or if you want to make it 5 seconds then do by pressing D ok similarly if you want to have multiple top output and you want to see multiple I mean one output stream you want to see uh, process shot by the memory other by the uh, process and many other ways so just press capital A and it will split uh, top into generally into four uh, multiple screens and then you can use A to cycle between them H for help and suppose you don't want to see 10 processes you just want to see four processes then you, you, you press N and you can give how many processes you want to see simultaneously in top output similarly if you don't want to see one the upper screen to be cluttered you can press L to hide the load average field you can press T to hide the CPU field, so second and third headers, right? And you can press M to hide the memory field, right? So it, uh, the top uh, output becomes very clear and it's not as cluttered as it looks. Okay, so let's go into the practical session and let's try to uh, apply our learning. Okay, okay, so. The first thing was to see the absolute. These are the processes which are running. If I press C, you see, I can see the complete path of the process. Since I have increased the font size, so it's just uh, going into the screen. Otherwise, you can see the complete path of it. Okay? So you can just do it by pressing C. Okay? And then you can come back by pressing it again. Okay? It's a very handy utility. I mean many a times I see a binary running and if I want to know from where it's running I can just press and I can see from where it's running. Okay. Um, then it's you know it's very very boring to see black and white kind of output. So if you want to make it a little bit colorful, say Z and it bingo it becomes colorful, right? And then you may like it. Okay. And suppose if I want to decrease the priority of this increase the priority of say this process currently it's 19. So I will press R then I have to tell about the process ID and then it's asking so I say minus 19 I want to give it to the highest priority and you see the nice value changes to 19 and it changes to 0 0 is the highest priority it goes from 0 to 40 and this goes from minus 19 to 20 so now it becomes the highest priority process so this is how you can I mean change the nice value alright so you can make this process more fire. So you can keep the priority of this process. Okay. Okay. Now, if I I have multiple cores or multiple CPUs, I can uh, I can I, if I have multiple CPUs, I can press one and I can see the uh, details of individual CPUs. But since I have only one CPU, so it will if I press one and CPU zero. It started giving information of CPU zero. But since I have only one CPU, so it's showing CPU 0. If I had multiple CPUs, then it would have CPU 0, CPU 1, CPU 2, that kind of information just by pressing 1. Okay. So back to that. Now, suppose if I want to change the refresh rate, how would I do it? I will say D. Currently, the default refresh rate is 3. I will say 1. So now the uh, top would be refreshing after every 1 second. Okay. So um, suppose if I want to, um, I want to have multi split this top into multiple screens, and I want to cycle through that, and I want to have one screen with the uh, uh, process sorted in memory order, and other screen the process sorted in CPU fashion, high CPU being the on the top. So how can I do it? I will say capital A. Can you see? Yeah, this screen is divided into four screens. One, two, three, four. And you can use A for now. You can see here it will show in which screen you are. 
by default you will be persistent suppose here i want to uh, i want to uh, have um, uh, it uh, sorted according to the memory i say shift m and you see it is sorted according to memory usage then i cycle to third and here i wanted to have a, a sorted according to cpu utilization so i say p and it is uh, sorted according to cpu utilization similarly i can cycle to four fourth window it shows here four and here i can i can i can again um, i can do shift o and i can uh, have it uh, utilize according to the say nice value right i say enter right so in this way i can i can have um, multiple top output right in multiple ways and i can analyze any process or my system performance accordingly you see how powerful it is right so i use it a lot when i am practically on a production system and it helps me a lot okay so if i want to okay so if i if i want to go back then i will again see capital a and i am back to if i again want to be black and white i again do that right now if i want to uh, i just want to see the say five processes so how, how would i do it i will say n and i say maximum is five tasks right so simple you press n and the number of tasks you want to see and now the five processes are in front of you okay so if you want to change it to default you can give it any number right similarly suppose if i want to hide this line i will say l the upper line is gone so you can see more processes right similarly you can do t for high um uh, for if you don't want cpu you can do l for hiding that and you can do m for hiding the number okay so l for hiding the first header that is the load average t for hiding the uh, cpu and m for hiding your memory okay so load average is max okay and uh, suppose if you want any help while you're running you say h and you are thrown with all the help that uh, you need right so you can read things like you to quit if you want to write the configuration file you press w if you want to fill a process you say k okay this we have to still still see right so this is how the um, and you can see the process uh, help page now suppose if I want to kill a process, how would I do it? Huh? How would I do it? Suppose I want to give the top process only. I will say kill. I will give the process ID. I will say enter. And I have to say whether uh, whether I want to kill it or not. I say yes. Can you see, top is killed. So you can kill any process from top. Okay, so it's quite while analyzing you can in any process, you can re nice, you can you can do anything, right? So this is the power of top command. Okay. So let's go back to our tutorial and uh, let's finish up what else we are left with. Okay. So the next is suppose you if you want to see uh, all the processes of a particular user so you say top hyphen u and suppose if you want to see uh, just few processes you say top hyphen p and the process id separated by comma so you can see uh, i mean uh, utilization and um, uh, and number of description of that process top description of that process right and uh, suppose if you want the top to execute only two cycles so you say top hyphen n2 so it will execute two two cycles similarly i mean the batch command you know batch is generally used batch mode of the top command is generally used for taking top output in in a file because if you directly do a redirection of the top command in a file it will it will have junk in it right it generally 
it generally does not have the output that is desired so you have to run top in the batch mode and then you have to define the cycles or you can define the delay i mean uh, you may introduce some delay uh, according to which top will dump the output in your redirected file similarly if you want to see all the processes uh, all the threads uh, running in a process so you, you just do top hyphen edge and the process id right so let's uh, let's go for the practical session okay so the first thing is top hyphen u and the user is research okay spelling is wrong research and you see so the research user is currently running this process right so you can analyze only this process okay so exit this and uh, similarly suppose if you want to see only this process you can say top hyphen p process id this process id this and you do enter and you can you can just see the selected processes and you can analyze and you can work around and you can play with it right whatever you want you can do okay so now if i want to run top say only two i just want to see three cycles of the top so i say top hyphen n3 it will just run for the three cycles and it will exit by itself you see that it exited by itself and if i want to run top in a batch mode you will see the difference the batch mode has so i say enter now it is actually overlapping for the three times earlier you was looking at three different streams of it now it's overlapping the entire time. so this is this batch mode is generally useful when you want to take output of top right so suppose if i want to take output suppose i want three second delay in the uh, cycle i say i want to take output three times so i will say top dot txt and i will enter it right so it will dump uh, top output for next three cycles right the cycle delayed by three seconds so here you see uh, very good output of top and in the three second delayed cycle okay okay now the last thing that we are going to cover right suppose if i want to see all the threads of a process so first we need to have process ID. so i know of a process which has two thread is vm tool lb so i just want its process id its process id is this so i say top this is hyphen capital h for all the threads then you will give the process id with hyphen p and i will enter and you see it's showing all the threads of this process okay so if you want to see all the threads and utilization in terms of memory uh, and cpu and also you want to change the priority of a thread you can do anything right so these are some of the most used command of top right so uh, this is how i finished my session and i i want you to practice this to read more things on that if you have any interesting to to tell me please share with me through the uh, through the youtube feedback section right comment section and if you find this tutorial useful please like it share with your friends and watch my other tutorials also and share your feedback okay bye signing off